and I'll catch you with these precepts. I had another cold cut, giving, of course, uh, honor and uh, glory to Yahweh. Double honors to the elect elders of the David that's been in this truth for decades and decades, patiently waiting for the second coming of Hamashiach, Wamalaki Bashar. A hearty, mighty shalom to all of the mighty men of the Most High God who are out there on the highways and byways, pushing this truth, magnifying the ministry, presenting their bodies as a living sacrifice, and enduring all things for the elect's sake. Shalom, shalom. Shalom to all of the men that may not be out there on the highways and byways as of yet. But they're working on it, they're getting built up in the spirit, they're praying, they're fasting, they're studying, they're being diligent and abounding in the work of the Lord. Shalom, shalom. Shalom to all of the aqua out there, the sincere sisters out there, holding it down in the households, reverencing the husbands, being submissive and diligent. And those who may not be married are those who tend upon the Lord without distraction. Shalom to those uh, uh, aqua. Shalom to the children, the ancient men, and the elect of Israel scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. And Shalom to everybody tuning in live. Judah Minor, Shalom King, Shalom Williams, Yahweh Servant, K Paradise, Divash Branch, Quiet Israel 23, Ephraimite Ak, and everybody else tuning in, and that will tune in, Lord willing. Right? The topic of this cold cut is Hymen, I believe I, I labeled this one Hymenaeus Philetus and Hermogenes, right? Hymenaeus. Philetus and Hermogenes. These are three men that you read about in the time of the New Testament. During the time of the Apostle Paul. These were men that came up with the disciples and with the apostles. And with the Apostle Paul and the men that he labored with. But these men, due to them allowing these demons to work on their mind, fell out the truth, had heresies. Various doctrines became apostates and became reprobate, man. Right? And uh, these men are back on the earth. Now, a lot of brothers, we talk about Peter, John, James. You know, we talk about King David, Noah, Enoch, Elijah, Moses, Nehemiah, Paul. We talk about these righteous men being back on the earth. And they are back on the earth. But you also have evil men back on the earth as well. Right? These same evil spirits are back on the earth as well. Hymenaeus, Philetus, Hermogenes. Alexander the coppersmith, right? And, and many other men that are uh, diatrephes, Demas. These are men you read about in the time of uh, the apostles, man. Right? First and foremost, let's go to, let's see, I had a few precepts written down. Let's go to first, t second Timothy chapter two, right? Let's go to second Timothy, the second chapter, right? And you have to read these accounts and be aware of, of these spirits that are looking to sift men out in the last days, right? Let's go to Second Timothy. I want the second chapter, right? So like I got this, this rain, it's, just, it's a storm out here in the background, right? But this is Second Timothy. So I get these pages stuck together, right? This Second Timothy chapter two, Jeez. and verse. I'm gonna start at fifteen. Second Timothy two and fifteen. Study to show thyself approved unto the Most High, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So the men of the Lord should be studying so they don't get caught up in doctrines. So you don't get caught up in heresies. You don't get caught up in lies, man. Remember the Most High said in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and 1, that in the last days, there will be seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Right? And these spirits and doctrines of devils are going to work on men's minds, man. And this always happens around the time of the Passover. Around the time of the Passover, you have various congregations, men, individuals, households, families, groups of men who separate themselves from the true understanding of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh man. Why? Because those men were never rooted from the beginning. And, and guess what? They, they're going to get caught out there. Right, because they're not studying to show themselves approved. You got certain men, they just watch videos all day. They don't really study. They don't really pray and fast and, and beg the most high for wisdom. They don't have a mind to do the work. They may just watch videos all day from this camp. Then they watch a few videos from that camp. Then they turn turn on this camp and they watch a few videos. But they really not, they're not rooted. So they don't they don't have a sure foundation. Right? So they're not able to rightly divide the word of truth. A lot of these doctrines that are coming out 
Half of these, these men can't even prove these doctrines. There, a lot of people are just saying them because somebody else said it. Or it sounds cool. Or it sounds it sound smooth, man. Right? You have to hold this, this, uh, this word dear to your spirit, man. You're dealing with the body and the words of Yahweh Shai. Right? This is verse 16. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. What is profane and vain babblings? Things outside of the truth. Right? That's like a brother coming out and he's saying, hey, I, you know, I'm looking in the scriptures now and I'm starting to think that Moses was a Judite. Right? I'm starting to think that the Edomites could be in their chariots too. You got to shut that down, man. You have to shun that behavior. See, in a lot of doctrines, they come out and they spread because men don't shut them down. A lot of brothers, you, you, you feed into it. You're debating this guy. You're enabling them. You're acting as if it's a small matter. Since when has handling the body of Yahweh Shai been a light or small matter, man? Hey, uh, um, our forefathers, man. Nicodemus, Joseph of Arimathea, they handled the body of the Lord with care. They wrapped it up in the linen. You understand? They laid them in a sepulcher where no man was laid. They took the spices of the aloe and the frankincense and myrrh. They wound them up. They handled the body of the Lord with care. Right now you're dealing with the body of the Lord, but you're dealing with this word. Right? The word is Yahweh Shah. So if anybody comes and brings anything outside of the word of Yahweh Shai, I mean, you're commanded to shun it. Right? Can a brother pull up the definition of shun? Baba Kasha? Don't feed into it. It's not funny. It's not a joke. It's not a laughing matter when a heresy comes into the scene, man. It's not, this, is, this isn't a game. This truth is not a joke. Uh, 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 let a brother come around me talking about Okay well I think the Edomites They're going to be in their chariots too You think I'm a You think we're going to laugh at that You know You think that You think that's You think that This, this is this is a, a, a comedy central man Now we're going to shut that down Right This is a Oh the water for that Judah Mania. Persistently avoid Ignore Or reject Someone or something through antipathy or caution you see that so throughout it for the definitions so you have to avoid that ignore it and reject it but shun a profane and vain babblings for they will increase unto more ungodliness it's like a seed like we always go into like a cancer man right it spreads throughout the body and if you don't shut it down and you and you uh you start entertaining it and you start thinking about it, you're going to start believing it. Once you start thinking about it and hearing this guy out and, and kind of, you know, seeing where he's coming from, it's, it's, it's too late. Nobody can save you from that. It's over for you. You have to shut it down immediately. Verse 17. And their word will eat as doth the canker. You see that in the um, footnote, they got gang green. And we go into that definition all the time. Gain green, when you look that up in the blue letter, it's a disease that spreads throughout the whole body and then eats at the bones. All right. It says, and their word will eat as doth the canker of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus. Right. And I believe I labeled this Hymenaeus, Philetus and Hermogenes because these men are back on the earth. These men oppose the apostles. Chiefly, they opposed the Apostle Paul, right? Hey, and they were taught by the Apostles, man. You know, they were taught by uh, the Apostle Paul, Timothy, Titus, Silvanus, Silas, Luke, you know, and these men that labored with uh, uh, Paul, right? And their word will eat as death the canker of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred. Saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. So you have men that are going to err from the truth. And these men had a, a demon on them. They were literally teaching that the resurrection is past already. Right? Here we are waiting on the great day of the Lord. Waiting on the Lord to return. 
where many bodies of the saints are going to arise out of the grave for the resurrection of the just. We're waiting on the chariots to come. We're waiting to get beamed up. We're waiting for our fathers that fell asleep and men that are martyred in this truth to be resurrected, man. But you had men teaching, hey, that happened already. Right? That happened already. Why are you sitting here waiting on the resurrection? You missed out. And that's wicked, man. That's wickedness. Now you got men, oh, well, there's no hope. Oh, well, I'll never make it. And, and guess what? A lot of people got caught up in that thing. That's why it says, saying that the resurrection is passed already and overthrow the faith of some. So certain men got overthrown. What kind of men got overthrown? Men that wasn't rooted. Men that didn't study. Men that didn't have a foundation. Men that were children tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine by the slighted men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive, paraphrasing. Again, if a brother get caught up, caught up in a false doctrine, now you can help that brother out. You can tell that brother, hey, Ak, that's not what it is. You shut it down. You show that brother the right way. But if that brother kind of hold on to it, hey, that's on him. That's on that brother, man. And we in the last days, man. All hell about to break loose on the earth. Here you have World War III about to start. Right? You have all types of madness happening on the earth. Seditions and riots and pandemonium in foreign lands and countries. And missiles being built and Iran being bombed. And threats and rumors of wars. Here you have all types of madness going on. So if you get caught up in that in these last days, that's on you, brother. Let's read on. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Most High standeth sure, having the seal, and the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one that nameth the name of Hamashiach depart from iniquity. Right? So you had these men, Hermeneus and Philetus, they had a, a doctrine demon on them. And they thought they knew what was going on, man. And they and they knew the Apostle Paul didn't teach that. They knew the uh, uh, what the Apostle Paul taught them. They didn't know about the resurrection until the Apostle Paul brought it to them. These men wasn't on a level, but the Apostle Paul and the men with Paul, they taught these guys. But these guys, they thought they was on a level. So they said, okay, well, look, we heard what the Apostle Paul said. And when we know that no man knoweth the day or the hour, but guess what? That thing happened already. So that's wicked, man. Just outright madness. Let's go to 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. Right? 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2. Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And, and Timothy, first and second Timothy, chiefly second Timothy. It's one of my favorite epistles because the Apostle Paul gives sound wisdom and knowledge and understanding to the servants of the Most High. And it's really when you read it, it's really written for men that are, that are doing his work. You know, it's not written for your woman, you know, sitting at home and, you know, baking unleavened bread. Right. This is really a commandment for Timothy to learn how to rule over the church. To learn how to be a bishop, what to look out for, what not to look out for, right? How to move in the spirit, how to be bold, be in zeal. What kind of men you need to look out for. Watch out for this guy, Hamenaeus. Watch out for this guy, Philetus. Hey, Paul called men out by name, man. Huh? So Timothy, you know, he was up and coming. He was a, a, a young man and he needed this counsel. That are in congregations or camps or that do this work. That we can, uh, you know, apply in our day-to-day -day life. Right? So read, no. Let me read this again. 2 Timothy 4 and 2. Preach the word. Be instant. Meaning, uh, uh, always ready. Right? You might, you know, be asleep. A brother call you. You know, you was taking a nap. Ah, can you help me out? Um, I need help, you know, breaking this precept down. Okay, you, hey, look, man. You, you break that precept down for that brother. Right now, a brother might text you. You might get a brother a call. You might text him back. You might forget. You hit him back up. Hey, these you got to be instant, man. Right, you're a servant of the Most High. Butlers and slaves, they have to do what their masters tell them instantly. So, if you're a servant of the Most High, 
And guess what? You're on their time. They're not on your time. You're on their time, man. Huh? Right? It reads be instant in season, out of season. When you feel like it, when you don't feel like it, when the weather's permissible, when it's snowing, when it's raining, reprove. So you have to learn how to reprove, brothers. Right? Meaning correct them and rebuke. Again, don't let somebody be Hymenaeus and Philetus to you. Because if you hear about it and you don't reprove them, the Most High is going to give you over to that doctrine. Right? Again, let a brother tell me that the Edomites are going in the chariots too because they have to go to slavery. See, Ak, when you really go to the book of Isaiah, the 26th chapter, and you go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 on down, and you link it up with Revelation, you know, chapter 21 is really saying that, let a brother go into that, man, and start kind of going into these precepts, and, and I'm sitting up there, and I'm starting, damn, I ain't, I ain't never see it like that. Damn, I'm kind of scratching my head. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to pray on that. Everything you don't have to pray on, man. You don't have to pray on everything. Hey, if a brother tell me to eat pork, hey, I eat this pork. You, what do you, th you think I'm going to go say, hold on, I, let me go pray on it? A lot of a lot of Jake is simple in Israel, man. Let me go on a fast. Let me see if the Most High is talking through this brother to have me eat pork. Hey, you got to make quick decisions, man, in this thing. You got to rebuke when it's time to rebuke. And the Lord said he would make him of a quick conceit and judgment in Isaiah 11 chapter and make him of a quick understanding. They're like the brother said, yeah, you got a point there. Brother saying this is this is really double fold. Right. This really triple fold. Uh, he link it up with Job 11 and six. You go to Ecclesiasticus. Right. Going to all these precepts is really triple fold, King. So you ain't see it like that. See, and a lot of brothers get caught out there, too, because of our respected persons. Right. Let me get a quick precept. I'm going to go back to Second Timothy. Right. Uh, a lot of titles and a lot of uh, sometimes even years in the truth. A brother might have been in this thing, you know, 40 years, 30 years. That's lucky. And you get caught up in that thing because you think this guy, you know, he has to be telling you the right thing. Hey, hey, a brother could be in this thing 20 years and still go to hell off. man. You could be an old man and still go off. Read about the old prophet in First Kings, the 13th chapter. He was an old man. Right. And he went off. man. The Lord used him to go off. All right, what am I getting? Um, please ask us. It's you. Right, let's go to Ecclesiastes. I want to go to the fourth chapter. So don't get caught up. A brother said, I'm the chief bishop, general king of my congregation. And the Edomites can make it to the cherry. You're like, wow, this brother's chief bishop, king, chief bishop, king, general. Surely what he says must be of God. Don't be, don't be. The Lord said, The simple believeth every word, man. Right, we tell even what we say, brothers got to go verify it, man. Right, go verify what I'm saying, man, and what brothers are putting out there, man. Don't, don't, don't be a fool. Hey, and if I'm going off, a brother got to say, Hey, Ak, you going off? If I start teaching the Edomites, you know, uh, uh can make it in the chariots, uh, let a brother, let a brother say, Ak, I see what you're saying. Hey, a brother need to get on me, man, because I'm gonna get on him. You know, you can't be all buddy, buddy. And oh, 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 that's the brother. You know, I've been knowing that brother for a long time. And if a brother going off, he going off. man. You need to correct that brother. I don't care how long you've been knowing that man. You know. Yeah, you can, you can be knowing this guy for 10 years, 20 years, man. You know, maybe he watched your children or maybe, you know, you, you saved his life or and maybe this guy helped him when you was down bad and. You know, y'all grew up together. Y'all came into this truth together. And, and this guy's going off. Hey, you got to get on this guy, man. You got to get on this brother. Right? Let's go to Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter. Hey, when it comes to the body, if you're high shot, man, there's no cut cards. Right? There's no, there's no cut card. There's no respect to persons. Right? That's the law. Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, and verse 22. Accept no person against thy soul, and let not the reverence of any man cause thee to fall. 
So don't accept anybody against your soul, man. And don't let your respect, your regard for a man, your friendship, your admiration. You may look up to a brother, man. Don't let that cause you to fall. If a brother is going off and he's moving in the spirit of Hymenaeus, Amphilitus, Hermogenes, Alexander the Coppersmith, Diatrephes, Demas, and any other of these uh, men that went the hell off in the time of the apostles, don't let that cause you to fall. Don't fall with that man. Right? Don't fall with that man. You had men that left the house of Saul and they joined the house of David, man. You know? You don't join yourself to the house of Saul. Even though Saul was king, hey, you had men that said, hey, look, I'm going to ally myself to the house of David, man. And you can read about that in the uh, first and second Samuel. You said many that were poor, in debt, etc., they came into David. You know, and they left the house of Saul, man. And they joined themselves unto David. Let's go back to 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. Right? Let's go back to 2 Timothy, chapter 4. Right? <clears throat> Let's try to get these precepts in through the Spirit. Right? To 2 Timothy. Right? So I see Chapter 4 and verse uh, 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And you're in these times. You're living in these days. You have brothers and sisters, when is that going to happen? That's happening right now. 2024 AD Men are not enduring sound doctrine Sound doctrine means complete doctrine Whole You understand? Healthy Pure doctrine Some brothers can't endure It's not enough for them To know the simple things Believe in Yahweh Shai Keep the law, statutes, and the commandments Right? The Most High is going to deliver us The nations, they're going into captivity you're going to receive the kingdom. If you endure, you got Jacob's trouble. You got prophecies. That, that's not enough for certain men. They got this hidden, nasty, vile lust inside of them where there has to be something more. That's why it says, but after their own lust, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears? Because they already had a teacher, but now they want to heap more teachers. And they're going to have itching ears. Wow, that sounds good. Damn, I mean, that do sound. I kind of see what this brother's saying. Mm. Yeah, I, mean, I ain't never think about it like that. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. All right, all right. Uh, yeah, the brother did say, you know, the, the, the Edomites, right? They're really not the, the so-called white man, right? They're really going into the wicked jakes. I can see that because the tares and the wheats, and we did come, the way the brother broke it down, I just, Wow. Right? Guess what, man? I'm not going to say it again. But, you know, let a brother come around me, man. And start start saying some madness. You better off not saying something. And if you don't say something, hey, the Most High is going to bring it out anyway, man. Right? The Lord says he's going to judge the secrets of the heart, man. Secrets of the heart by the revelation of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah in those days. So if, even if you got it in your mind, the Most High is going to bring that out, man. Right? Because a lot of brothers may secretly believe something, but they don't want to say it. You really believe the Edomites can make it, but you don't want to say it. So then you found out a brother's teaching that the Edomites can make it, and you start kind of watching those videos. Because you really wanted the Edomites. You really wanted them to be in that uh, chariot with you, man. You might have a brother say, hey, you could pop the, the, the other nations, man. You could pop they woman. You know, right now. You could do this, that, and the third. You can sacrifice animals right now. Just build you an altar in your backyard. You'll be ever so righteous. You start going through all of the precepts of the sin offering and the burnt offering and the trespass offering and the meat offering and the grain offering and the free will offering and the thanksgiving offering. You just go through all these offerings, man. Yeah, Aki, you really need to start sacrificing, man. Think how I wish I'd make his body a living sacrifice. Where's your sacrifice at? You're supposed to have your altar. Then the Lord said in Isaiah 19, we're going to have an altar in the midst of Egypt. Where is your altar at? So then the brother, he started, damn, I, yeah, do need to get me an altar. That would be righteous. Right? Then the brother starts showing you where the kidney is. 
and the call of the liver and the fatted part and how you remove it and wash the legs and take it and take the dung out and he start breaking it down for you. Next thing you know, you got a damn big tabernacle in your backyard, man, with a fictitious mercy seat and a brazen laver. You made your backyard the damn wilderness. Next thing you know, the damn uh, child protective services is coming knocking on your door, man. The local authorities are trying to figure out why you're slaying things and burning them to the sun. Right? Everybody's trying to figure this thing out, man. So you can't heap to yourselves teachers having itching ears. And that's what brothers do. And, and they, uh, 2 Timothy 4 and 4, and they should turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Right, so you have to make sure you're completely rooted and grounded in the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah. Don't heap to yourselves, teachers, having itching ears, man. And the Lord said in 2 Timothy, the third chapter, right? Let's get this in 2 Timothy. You're like the brother said, said you get fired by the HOA, man. Right? They come all up in your crib trying to investigate the matter. I want 2 Timothy 3. And 13, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And usually this is how it goes. You know, I haven't been in the truth an extra long time, but we've heard and we've seen things. Usually how it goes is when the man has a doctrine, it doesn't just stop there. Right. It doesn't just stop. There's another doctrine that comes with that. And it may not come immediately, but it might come, you know, three months later. A brother might say, okay, the Edomites can make it. Now he's teaching that Babylon the Great won't be destroyed. Then six months later, he's teaching that, you know, you could you could divorce your wife if she don't commit fornication. So he starts, usually how, how Satan operates is he adds more leaven to this man as time progresses. And so he's ultimately ripe for destruction. That's what happens. People tend to wax worse and worse, man. Usually when a guy got a doctrine, it's only a matter of time before he brings out another doctrine. You're like, damn, he's teaching that too? Now they're teaching that? Damn, then when are they going to stop? And it usually just evolves and it spirals out of control either till it turns back to Christianity or it turns into some quasi-fanatical, lewd madness. That's what happens in Israel, man. All right? 2 Timothy 3 and 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And don't be the one that's being deceived by those who are deceiving. Right? But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. So you have to continue in the things that you were learned or that you learned, man. Huh? Stop having this, this spirit of, okay, well, what else is there out there? It has to be deeper. It has to be more. I have to find out the in-depth new breakdown. I have to be the deepest brother. What else is there? Hmm. Maybe it's really going into this. Right? Hey, stop. Don't have that spirit, man. Huh? Don't have that spirit. Stick to what you was taught, man. And stop trying to find out the in-depth fantasies of your own belly and pride. And the Lord said, knowledge puffeth up, man. See, a lot of brothers, they learn stuff from men. And then they start thinking they know more than those men that they uh, learned from, man. Then they start kind of telling these men what the real breakdown is. But these men would have had no understanding if there wasn't men set up before them to give them the understanding. Right? Now, you can have men like the Apostle Paul and certain men. Uh, 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 David said, I have more understanding than my teachers. But he said, because I keep all thy precepts. Right? But if your teachers keep the precepts, a brother needs to keep that in mind, too, because a brother will pull that. Great men are not always wise. I have more understanding because I keep thy precepts. 
right? But if your teacher is in the spirit of Yahweh Bashmi Shai, then you can't put those precepts, man. Right? So let, let, let's move on. So Jake do that in Israel, but you don't do that in the world. You don't go to the so-called white man in his colleges and you start kind of telling him, he writing on the white boy, you say, look, look, hold on now, hold on, hold on. Let me really break it down for you. This is what it's going into. Here's the true breakdown. Hey, this guy, he been doing this, he, he been in this thing, man. You know? He has all types of certifications and experience and qualifications that you don't have. Now, even if you read the whole algebra textbook, front to back, you still ain't going to be able to break it down or, or show this guy because he, he's living this thing, man. He's been doing this thing for a long time. Right? So you have to continue thou in the things that you were uh, uh that you learned. And then another part it says, and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou has learned them. So if I was taught, you had the movie uh Karate Kid, man. Right? You had the uh the the, the, the kid karate kid, and you had Mr. Uh, Miyaki, man. You had the student and you had the teacher. Hey, this guy had one teacher. I think they had like 10 Karate Kid movies, man. When did this guy, I don't remember his name from Karate Kid. When did the Karate Kid switch up his teacher? And he had three teachers. He was learning from this guy. He was learning from this guy. All of those teachers have a different spirit, man. And Mr. Miyagi, uh, he had a different spirit than that other guy, man. And that guy, they have different spirits. And a lot of those uh, Moabites, when you watch them karate flicks, uh, uh, they're loyal to their teachers. They're loyal to their masters, man. You know? And they'll, they'll fight and they'll bring up, hey, look, well, you're going to have to fight my master. Well, I'm his top student. See, a lot of these nations, they have more discipline and more integrity than a lot of Negroes, man. You know? They have a lot more integrity and discipline. They they damn come early. You know, but, but Jake, Negro, you leave it up to a Negro, man. A Negro, one thing he got is pride. And one thing you can't tell somebody, a, a Negro, is that he's wrong. You just can't tell him. But you go to these other nations, you go to these monks, these monks in the, in the damn mountains, man, of Mount Fuji and wherever they at, the Himalayas. And these guys, they're disciplined to their masters, man. They get up, you know, and some of these guys, they bow down to their masters. And they don't switch their masters because their master yelled at them. Or their master told them, get up at 5 a.m. Or their master told them, you got to punch this uh, wooden plank until it break. And they, they hold it down, man. When you watch that movie, uh, Kill Bill, you had uh, that, that Edomite woman. You had uh, Uma Thurman. And you had, um, she was there. She had, it was another woman there that was with her. I think it was another woman. And they was with that, uh, uh, what was this guy's name in the movie, man? I, I can't remember his name. But they had the guy with the beard. All right. If you've seen Kill Bill, you know what I'm talking about. If you didn't see it, check it out. So this guy had the long beard and hey, this guy was giving him hell, man. This guy was giving him hell in that movie, man. He was yelling at him. He was beating him. They had to go through all types of things, man. Hey, but they endured that. But Jake is fickle and Jake is emotional, effeminate, and Jake is weak. Right, that was his name. See, I was going to say that through the spirit. Pi May, you see that? Right? So, let's read on. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. So you got to have that uh, discipline spirit, man. That integrity, you know? And has been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them. You must have integrity and discipline when it comes to uh, this truth and when it comes to the doctrine. Let's go to Romans 16. And you can't be a respected person. Right? Let's go to Romans chapter 16, right? It's a lot here. Romans chapter 16 and verse 17, right? Let's go to Romans chapter 16. So the apostle Paul, he put out, put out some gems through the spirit. Romans 16 and 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and defenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. 
So this is a commandment to mark them, which cause divisions. So you have to, when you mark somebody, you take a mental note of that. Like you might be at a feast day and the brother might say, uh, you know, really that it's unlawful to drink wine, right? You know, it's unlawful to drink wine. It's actually wicked to drink wine and eat meat. Now you might be, you know, by, by, you might not be in that conversation, but you might've overheard it. Maybe you was getting a cup of water or, you know, maybe you was pouring a glass of wine. Maybe you was talking to another brother about camp or something, but you kind of overheard that. Hey, you can't ignore that you overheard that, man. You can't, you can't act like that didn't happen. Like you didn't just hear that madness, man. You're supposed to look at that. Now, you may not say nothing. It might be the wrong time, right? It might be a lot going on. You might have your woman there or, you know, brothers kind of drinking and mirth. They're doing their thing. But guess what? You're going to look at that brother and you're going to mark that brother. You're going to get a good glimpse of what he looks like, what he had on, the time. You might look at your phone and see what time he said it, and you're going to take a note and say, this guy, something ain't right about this guy. Right, this guy ain't right right here, man. And then you're going to have that, no, I need to watch out for this guy. Because if he out there saying that now, in the midst of mirth and madness, how much more when he's serious, man? So you take note of that guy. Say, look, this guy ain't right. Now, if you heard something about it, hey, you got to say something, man. You hear something, you got to say. <laughs> what they say? You, you see something, say something, man. Either you, you say something to that brother, or you might be in a camp, maybe you like a prospect, or maybe you're kind of in this thing, you're just figuring you th this thing out, and you bring that up to your, um, it's a lot of different caps of rank and structure. You bring that up to your uh, your officer or your superior, and you bring that up, say, look, you know, is this going off, right? So-and-so, then he might say, well, you know, where you hear that from? Well, yeah, you know, this brother, he kind of brought it out. So you got to kind of say that, man, Right? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta either rebuke that brother or you gotta bring that matter up. You think in the military, now I haven't been in the military, but if you think in this so called white man's military or the Russian military or the Chinese military, you know, where you got a soldier, he say, look, man, I'm thinking I'm about, I'm about to take down, you know, uh, the, the world leader, right? <clears throat> I'm gonna take down Putin. I'm going to take down. You think if they say that, you don't think these officers or these guys ain't going to say nothing, man. And they're going to bring that up, man. You're going to be brought up on those charges. Didn't Mordecai do that? Mordecai brought up the matter when these two men wanted to assassinate the king. He said, this, this, is, this can get bad. So you got to get on those guys. Get on that brother. Mark that brother. And, and, and figure out the matter Right So it reads That's what it means mark them which have divisions And offenses Contrary to the doctrine Which they have learned and avoid them You gotta avoid them huh? You think I'm gonna hang around a negro That say all nations can be saved You think I'm gonna kick it And eat and, and the Lord said let just men eat and drink with thee You think I'm gonna be on the phone with a brother who believes that all of the Israelites are going to burn in hell forever and eternity? You think I'm going to kick it with that guy, man? You think I'm going to kick it with a brother who believes uh, that Babylon the Great is really uh, uh, Rome, ancient Rome? Hey, we don't have much to talk about, man. Now, I, I'll salute you. I might salute you, you know, the, you know, the name of the Lord. You know, I might say, okay, brother, how you doing? You know, but guess what, man? That conversation not going to last too long. I got, I got things I got to do. Well, I, how come, well, how come you don't talk to me? How you, you going off? We already talked about it. Huh? Babylon, the great is America. You're teaching things contrary to the truth. Oh, well, Ak, I thought, Ak, well, you've been knowing me for so long. I mean, that, that's true, Ak, but you're going off. The Lord told me to avoid you. Here, look at Romans 16 and 17. And you got to hold it down for the, you can't, you can't, well, I don't like that part, avoid them. You got a lot of brothers, you said mark them, but avoid them. I don't like that part. Let me just pretend that part don't exist. Let me, let me just still kind of, no, man. It says, and avoid them. 
Can somebody pull up the definition of avoid? Baba Kasha. Right? Avoid them. Verse 18. Right? For they that are such serve not our Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, but their own belly, meaning their own mind. And by good words and fair speeches, deceive the heart to the sick. Some brothers get deceived by good words. Maybe an extensive vocabulary kind of makes you believe that a brother is a man of the Lord. Right? Maybe a brother uses big words. Right? And, he, and you kind of make it seem like this brother got this thing figured out. I the water for that. To stay clear of. <laughs> see that? Stay clear of, man. Right? Like your, your damn traffic. It might be traffic and your GPS might say, look, you could take another route. You'll get there 30 minutes quicker. Right? There's no roadblocks, no traffic. You be a damn fool to say, no, I want to stay in traffic. I like cars and I like to sit down and burn my gas and damn miss my appointment. No, a wise man, he's going to avoid that traffic. He's going to say, OK, I'll take the clear path with no impediments, less danger. And I'll get there 30 minutes quicker. I'll take that route. So that's when you, av you avoid things, man. Right. To stay clear of, go around or away from. Swerve. To avoid a pothole. You got a lot of potholes out here. The Lord said a whore is a deep ditch. You know? And a strange woman is a narrow pit. You got to swerve, man. You might be driving. You know, you, you looking. Damn pothole. You don't you don't embrace. <laughs> I never seen a sinkhole in the open up and a brother, he just take your head on. He driving his damn car and he just damn floor it, man. All right, pothole. I see you coming. Sinkhole. The damn ground opened up. He just floored, thinking that he could damn like this damn fast and the furious, man. You don't floor it, man. That's reprobate. Damn, fall right into the damn ditch. And you might pause, you might break, and you might get another lane, you might put that in reverse, and you might have to get, hey, you got to make this thing happen, man. Or you're going to fall into eternal darkness. Right? So it says to swerve to avoid a pothole. To take measures so as not meet. It's like, let's check this part out. To take measures so as not to meet or see someone. A yeah, brother might want to see you, man. He believes the Edomites could be saved. Hey, Aki, you want to come over? All right, you just come on. I, you know, you know. Let, let's go over some scriptures. This brother believes that the Edomites could be saved. And America won't be destroyed. You don't have to keep the law. You got this, this Nick, this, uh, this, this, uh, boy, man. You got this, this demon out there who calls himself King David eating pork. You think I'm a kick it with this guy, man, who calls himself David eating pork and abominable foods. And I'm going to sit in that nasty ass car that he sits in, man. And go to that house. I'm going to just mind my business. And I just sit in the corner. I kind of mind my business. And they eating the pork. And they sniffing and burping. And farting and hollering. And, and getting drunk. Drinking it monkey style. And freaking off. And I'm kind of just sitting in the corner. I don't want to say nothing. Hey, 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 look, man. Let me walk into a house. It's a bunch of brothers. Eating pork with fringes on. Either either two things gonna happen. And I'm not gonna tell you the two things that's gonna happen. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and 19. Right? Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 19. Let's get one or two more. We're gonna wind down. Right? 1 Corinthians. Actually, I'm gonna start at 11 and verse. 18. All right. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 18. It reads for first of all, when ye come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you. That, that schisms right there. Really heresies because the church of Corinth, they had various doctrines and madness. Right. I hear that there be divisions among you and I partly believe it. Yeah. Sometimes a hey, brother. Might he might have a doctrine? You kind of knew it was coming, right? Brother might be going off. You, you you know some things you know when a brother's about to be seduced, man. 
right? It reads, for there must also, it's lucky, for there must be also heresies among you that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. So the Lord said there must be heresies. Usually when you have divisions, you have heresies. What is a heresy? A heresy is a doctrine contrary to the truth in its simplest terms. The Lord said, for there must be also heresies among you that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. So when there is doctrines out there, it usually makes manifest which men are serving the most high and which men are not. That's in Malachi, the third chapter. Then ye shall, then shall ye return and, and uh, judge between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Pa uh, greatly paraphrasing. So a lot of brothers get approved and made manifest when these heresies come around. Right? Yeah, I knew that brother wasn't right, man. The Most High made it manifest that this man was not a man of the Lord. He's teaching that Babylon the Great is actually Jerusalem and he's in the kingdom now. Then you got a brother that's approved to rebuke it. That brother was made manifest. Yeah, I knew that brother was going to stand up for the truth. I knew that brother was righteous. So the apostle Paul, he said, the men that are approved of Yahweh Bashmiel was shy, they're going to be made manifest because they're going to shut down heresies and lies. And the men that bring forth the heresies and the lies, they themselves will, it's like it will also be made manifest. All right, let's go to the book of Titus, chapter two. And hey, that's usually what happens, man. When there's a doctor comes out or a heresy, it's manifest who's approved and who's not approved. Who studies, who doesn't study, right? Who's rooted, who's not rooted. Who's in this thing for real? Who's in this thing playing around? Got a lot of brothers playing around, man. You know? And it's, this isn't a game, man. You can't turn off, turn on Israelite mode. But turn turn it on when I watch the videos. I'm an Israelite. Press a damn button in your back, and you you wound on up and turn into an Israelite. Put your fringes on, and you're watching this. And hey, this thing is real, man. You have to take this truth and this and the doctrine of Yahweh Bashmiel Shai deadly serious. Because if you add and take away from it, the Most High is going to add unto you the plagues that are not written in this book. Right? That's Revelation 22, 18 on down, paraphrasing. So this isn't a game. This isn't something that you just, you know, you juggle around with and you could just make light of the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Right? So let's get this in, um, what do I want? I want titles. So I can, right? Get a few more, maybe one or two more. Right? Then I got to wind down. Right? This is Titus chapter 2. And, and again, brothers got to rebuke that stuff, man. Right? You got to shut that stuff down. Don't, uh, you know, brothers get really emotional, man. I love my Ak. I, I, that's my brother. Yeah, you love your brother. And what is love? Correction. Not suffering sin upon him, man. If you've been in this thing for quite some time and you get caught up in some doctrine, then, then that, again, that's on you, brother. You got brothers been in this thing 10 years, 12 years, you know, 15 years, 20 years. You got a guy that's been in this thing his first month and he start breaking the scriptures down to you, showing you all types of lies. You've been in this thing six years, seven years. Yeah, I can see what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, King. I mean, yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah. Makes sense, makes sense, makes sense, makes sense. Let's go over that more. Let's do a live on it. Let's do a video on it. Let's break it down. Then you got brothers that secretly believe stuff. Then they call other brothers to see if they really believe it too. Like, you know what I was thinking? What's that, King? Not, 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 never mind. Not, not, not. No, nah, what is it, Ak? What is it? What is it? Nah, nah, you don't. Nah, this is too much for you, Ak. I don't know if you're going to be able to, to deal with this one. Ak, what is it? What is it? All right, Ak, you got your sword on you? You know I got my sword on me. Go to the book of Genesis, chapter 50. Next thing you know, this brother's in Genesis chapter 50, man. You see what you see this when it says Joseph Bones, right? That's really talking about Elijah. 
or Elisha. Because when you go to the book of 2 Kings, so then a brother, he's, he he go to 2 Kings. Then a brother following along. You got a brother, his eyes getting big. He, he getting excited because he following along. Wow. Wow, wow. Look at this. Damn. <laughs> brother damn grinning. Following his page. I got to get the 2 Kings. Wow. Look at this. All right. Getting all excited and riled up. Huh? You know, getting getting all, all damn jammed up, huh? Because the brother said, go to Second Kings. Your brother's just been in this thing for quite some time. You're supposed to shut that down, huh? Stop getting all excited and all, <laughs> all worked up, all hot and bothered, huh? Because the brother said, go to Genesis 50, link it up with Second Kings. You get all hot and bothered, huh? Right? He's supposed to shut that down through the spirit, man. Huh? Right? I want to actually go to Titus, right? Let's go to uh, Titus, right? Titus 2. That's what I want to get. All right? Titus, the second chapter. Titus chapter 2 and verse 15. All right? So the Lord gave wisdom to the apostle Paul to get to Titus and get to Timothy. All right? This is Titus. See where we at. Chapter 2. I'm gonna start at 14. All right, so lock here. Titus chapter 2 and 14. It reads, Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. You know what this means? These things speak and exhort everything written in Titus, the first chapter and the second chapter, even the third chapter. Everything that, that you're commanded, speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. You have authority from the Most High God, Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh The day that you came into this truth, the day that you learned these scriptures, especially you seasoned men. Right. And I'm really getting on you seasoned men, too. Because you got brothers. See, I can understand a brother been in this thing two weeks and he, he's trying to figure it out and he's getting caught up. It's still unfortunate, but you brothers has been in this thing for quite some time. And you hear this stuff. Your first goal is not to accept it and hear it. You got to rebuke it. Even as a defense mechanism, you're supposed to just naturally question it and rebuke it. Like, nah, I don't know. Nah. Don't just be the brother where you just see every damn thing, man. Yeah, I see it. I see it. Your eyes, like I said, your eyes are all big. You just, I see, I just see what you're saying. Well, brother, you see every damn thing, man. Certain stuff you don't see. No, I don't see that, Ock. You know? No, I don't, I don't see it. Give me another precept. No, I, no I'm not seeing it, Ock. I, I don't see that. Because if you, again, if you start saying, well, I see what you're saying. The most hot here is that he's going to mark your words. And you're going to really start seeing what this brother said. So all that being nice and emotional, because you don't want to, you know, ruffle anybody's feathers. The hell with that, man. That emotional, uh, 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 effeminate spirit, man. We're the men of the Lord. We're the servants of Yahweh Bashem Shai. We're dealing with the body and the word of Yahweh Shai, man. I don't care if a brother get emotional. I don't care if a brother like me or not, man. I'm not here to, I'm not, we're not here to be brothers, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking, we're not here to be Mr. Nice Guy, man. I just say Nice Guy Eddie. We're not here to be friendly all the time, man. Especially when it comes to matters of understanding and matters of heresies and matters of truth. This is deadly serious. Yeah, uh, uh, Peter chopped off a dude's ear. For trying to grab up the Lord, man. Huh? You know? Again, look how Joseph and uh, uh, Nicodemus dealt with the body. Look how the woman dealt with the body of the Lord. Look at the care. Even when Mary Magdalene, uh, uh, when she was at Yahweh Shai's sepulcher, talking to Yahweh Shai, even though she didn't know, she said, where is the Lord's body? Just tell me where it's at and I'll carry it myself. So even, even the certain woman had a certain, a high level of regard and reverence for the body of our Lord. All right. 
Now, you don't have to call the brother out his name. You don't have to, you know, get violent. You don't have to get violent and, you know, get worldly. But you use indiscretion and moderation, wisdom and understanding, and you correct that brother. And you do it with authority. Don't rebuke a brother without authority. There's no point in rebuking the brother. If we catch a brother eating pork. Is that, is that pork? Oh, um, bro, I don't think you should be really eating that. Your damn voice cracking and your legs trembling. Uh, you really shouldn't be eating that, I think. Uh, hey, look, man. Hey, that brother ain't going to take you serious, man. Is that is that what I think it is? <laughs> hey, you can't have that. Is that is that what I think it is, spirit, man? No, get on that, brother. Out there eating pork. What are you doing, man? You're going off. That's what it means. Rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Let no man despise thee. Don't be a a, a, a timid rebuker, man. Right? Let's get uh, let's go to the book. Of let's see, I had maybe one or two more, right? First Timothy, I quoted First Timothy four, right? But let's let's actually get it, right? Let's actually get it, right? It's a lot here. Bear with me, these pages. All right, First Timothy, chapter four, and verse one. Like I said, we quoted it, but I want to read it, and I believe I wanted to get First Timothy, actually. Let's get 1 Timothy 1 real quick. All right, 1 Timothy chapter 1 and 5. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and a, it's like you, and of a good conscience and the faith unfeigned, right? Meaning your faith is sincere and rooted. That's what this is about. For which some having swerved, having turned aside unto vain jangling, so certain men, they had the faith, but they swerved, right? They swerved and then they erred. When you look that word up in the Greek, it means they erred, right? See that? Not aiming at, meaning they were on a path and a trajectory to the kingdom, but they swerved out the path and burned in the fire and drowned in the water. And they turned aside into vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, Understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm, because certain brothers they hear doctrines and they become master teachers. Been in this thing two years, four years, and you're the, you're the master teacher, and we all have to listen to you. You have all of the understanding, right? You seen brothers teaching, right? You heard what brothers were saying. You was at home smoking the blunt four years ago, five years ago, six years ago, and now you're coming in this thing and you're the master teacher. And you're going to tell the teachers what's supposed to be going on. It says, understanding now that what they say. Because when you really start interrogating and pressing out a lot of these doctrines, you know, it, it, it's nothing that a lot of uh, brothers can say, man. Right? Understanding now that what they say, nor whereof they affirm. So the Apostle Paul had to deal with these spirits, man. And I want to jump down. Right? First Timothy chapter 1. And verse 18. All right, first Timothy chapter 1 and 18. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. So you take this truth and you fight these spiritual battles that you deal with on a day to day basis. Rather you deal with demons or you're dealing with doctrines or you're dealing with your own flesh and doubt or spirits that try to vex you, you take the word of the Most High and use it as your primary weapon. This is your ICBM right here, man. This is your, mis this is your, your, your weapon of mass destruction to these demons and these spirits, man. Right? So you use this to fight your warfare. Right? Read North. Verse 19. Holding faith and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. How do we keep reading about the Apostle Paul saying men are going to fall out? Some men were there, then they fell away. Some men was in this truth, then they got seduced. Some men had itching ears because that was a heavy spirit that was going on. You have men saying the resurrection was passed already. You have men saying Yahweh Shad 
never walked in the flesh, Gnosticism, the spirit of Antichrist that John had to deal with. You had wicked men that Jude had to deal with. You, you, you have these same spirits. All right. That's why it says holding faith. You can't let this thing go. And a good conscience, meaning your mind is clear. You're not doubting the doctrine. You're not deceived. You're not double-minded. You don't have that what-if spirit. Holding faith in a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. You know, some brothers get shipwrecked. And the, the ancient Greeks, they had that their false god, uh, the siren. And the siren, where you get your police siren from, and see, the, you know, the police siren, the ambulance siren, is to attract people. It's to let people know there's an emergency or there's danger or there's a fire or a murder. That's what the siren for is, is to attract you and gravitate you to that vehicle that that vehicle can receive priority on a highway and they can make the move that they have to make to save a life. Right. Or to take a life. That's the job of the siren. It goes back to the ancient Greeks because they would have a, a so-called God, a siren that would be on these rocks, on these islands, and they would sing and call unto the sailors. And as sailors, they would be on their journey to get gold or, you know, do whatever. And then they would get seduced by that sound of the siren, right? And they would keep hearing it and they would turn their ship, the hem or the wheel of their ship, and they would turn it, the helm, and they would keep going and turn it. And they were following that sound. And they keep following, they keep following, they keep following, they keep following, they keep following it until they, what, crash into the rocks, bro. And there was nothing ever there. It was just a, a damn demon the entire time. See, a lot of brothers, you're selling on living waters, man. Right? You're on that right path to everlasting life in the kingdom. But you start swerving, hearing demons and entertaining doctrines and thoughts instead of immediately shutting it down. That's why the Lord said these men, having put away, they put it away concerning faith have made shipwreck. When you're shipwrecking the waters, you drown. Right? These waters are supposed to save you. Even Ezekiel said, the waters that I cannot swim in. Right? Where the waters were at the ankles and the loins, you know, etc. These waters that are, that are supposed to save you, Jake, you're drowning in, the, in these waters, man. Huh? Of whom is Hymenaeus? There you go with Hymenaeus again. Of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. So we say he delivered these men unto Satan. Meaning he cast them out the church. And, and, and ultimately, that's what it comes down to. If a guy don't get right, man, there's no point of keeping that guy around. He's going to become like Hymenaeus and Alexander. You have a lot of Hymenaeuses and a lot of Alexanders in the world of Israel, man. There's a lot of brothers in this truth, man. You think every brother is, is, is the elect? You think every, the Lord said many are called and few are chosen. So you're going to have men that are delivered unto Satan. The Apostle Paul didn't kick it with these guys, man. Right? He didn't break bread with Hymenaeus and Alexander. He, he immediately got rid of those men. That they may learn not to blaspheme. Because when you go against the truth, you get delivered unto Satan back into the world. Right? Let's go to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and 14. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Yeah, you don't have to, you know, throw up curses on him and harm that brother, right? But you just, you note know that, man, and you have no company with him, right? The word company is a root word. Com meaning with and panios is Latin for bread. You don't break bread and eat with that guy. Or the most is going to get up with you and that spirit is on him, it's going to hop on you. You note know him and you have no company with him. Not out of just pride, but it's that he may be ashamed. So he'll learn like, damn, man, I, maybe I wasn't teaching the right doctrine. Maybe everybody left me. I got delivered unto Satan. Let me go back and study that doctrine that I was so confident in. And he goes back and studies, say, no, nah, that ain't it. 
He fasts, he pray, and then he, you know, he he might come back in this thing. And the most high might open the door for him. So one one account, you cast them out that they may learn not to blaspheme. Because a lot of brothers think they could bring doctrines in into the body or into the nation. And as if it's a free pass, ain't nobody gonna say nothing. You cast them out that they could learn that brothers take this truth serious. Or you cast them out of the name. The most high will cast brothers out this truth. Also, that they can be ashamed and repent. But you don't keep it that spirit around. Because it, it brings no profit. All it's going to bring is leaven and sin and madness and folly. You know, but with that, we're going to close up. Giving, of course, our honor and glory to Yahweh. Ba'ashimah, Mashiach, Wamalak, Yabashai. Most high willing, you are edified. Kwam, Yashallah. Shalom.